that was absolutely one of the most rewarding experiences of my whole life, I'll have to say. What is it that I'm talking about? Rebarreling my very own Winchester Model 70 Heavy Varmint in 22-250. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com and MakingWithMetal.com. We are ready here on Gavin Tube to get into some really hardcore gunsmithing content. And it's gonna start here with this Winchester Model 70 rebarreling experience start to finish. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my own personal journey, kind of getting ready for researching, acquiring, and then completing the work required to chamber this rifle, to inlet the stock and to thread the muzzle. In the second part, I'm gonna actually walk through all the specifics of what I did from start to finish. I'm gonna walk through all of the things I did here on this Precision Matthews PM1440 GT Ultra Precision Lathe. I've got the Precision Matthews PM949 TV variable speed three horsepower Bridgeport style milling machine. I used that to inlet the stock and I made custom tooling to cut the channel. I will be walking through all that. In the third part, I'm gonna walk through all of the specifics of the machines that you're gonna need, the tooling that you're gonna need, the supplies, the parts, all of it. It is non-trivial. There's some things you can buy. There's some things that you have to adapt and make yourself. It's all a part of enjoying this whole experience that it is to be a gunsmith. So, how did this whole thing come about? Well, it was about nine years ago I bought this rifle, Winchester Model 70 Heavy Varmint 22250. It was at a pawn shop. I liked the way that it looked, and I really wanted to try 22250 for varmint hunting. And got the rifle, reloaded for it, started to shoot the ammo, and fell in love with it. I love the heavy McMillan stock, the heavy bull barrel on it, and really enjoyed it, except it just wouldn't shoot good groups. I couldn't get down below an inch. Usually it was more like an inch and a quarter, maybe even a little bit more up to an inch and a half. Intense frustration. So I thought, it's 22250. The barrel must be shot out. It must be burned out. And I have confirmed that now. I have the Lyman bore cam, bore scope. I'll show you some of the footage from that. It is absolutely roasted and toasted <laughs> from the chamber and throat all the way out the muzzle. There's heat cracks all, all the way down. So it's, it's no mystery why this gun wouldn't shoot. And I thought I could have it rebarreled but if you really want to own these barrel burner calibers, you really want to be able to do the job yourself. A, it's expensive to have it done. B, I've heard stories of people waiting six months to have a rifle rebarrel, to have that type of gunsmithing done. I already had all of the reloading skills and I thought if I could do the gunsmithing and build rifles, rebarrel rifles, chamber rifles, wouldn't that be great? Because now I have complete control over the shooting experience. I can't control the weather but I can get training for myself, I can make my own ammunition, and then I could build and fine tune and hone my own rifles and handguns to do what I wanna do. It's like a dream come true for a mechanical engineer like myself. So I set out on the journey to get ready and to do this job, and it's, it's been years. I've had a lot of things, leaving my corporate job, moving, building a shop, deciding to switch up machine shop equipment. I started with my Logan 11 by 36. I have a video on that, I'm making with metal. And I just decided I want more capacity and more features. And that's where this PM 1440 GT from Precision Matthews came in. It did the job awesome. Back to the beginning, I reached out to the guys at Brownells who I had known from my AR MPR project. They worked with me on that. And I said, hey, I wanna rebarrel this rifle and what I'm gonna need. And so we talked about different barrel manufacturers and all of the different tools and supplies that I was gonna need. And they were, they were super helpful in steering me the right direction in terms of what I was gonna to need to do the job. So that was great. And I got the equipment and the supplies and then I started to research, and the first book that I got was the John B. Hinnant book. It's got it's the green cover book. It's available at Brownells, and it's traditional rifle chambering and blueprinting, and fascinating read. But 
a lot of the processes have, have kind of evolved since then. There's, there's different ways of rechambering a rifle, reburying a rifle, and I wanted to look at a lot of different ways. So then I bought the Gordy Gritters DVD, which is a really good resource, really good resource, and studied it and then reached out to Gordy himself and talked to him on the phone, had a bunch of exchanges on email, super nice guy, and he offered to kind of mentor me through the whole process and learned a ton from, from all that. And so I'm continuing to research and continuing to read. And then I notice, say, uh, there's this guy on rifleshooter.com. He's actually got the same lathe, this PM1440 GT. You know, I guess great minds think alike. So I reached out through Rifle Shooter's contact form and met the guy that runs it, Bill Marr. He's over on the East Coast. I'm here on the West Coast. But we have the same interests and the same lathe. <laughs> so his whole take on gunsmithing and chambering and rifle work in general was a good compliment to Gordy's. Gordy's solely focused kind of on the, the bench rest market and crowd and you know builds championship rifles and that kind of thing. Kind of more specialized. And Bill is kind of more of a generalist and has a bunch of really cool projects. Everything from chassis rifle builds to barrel cut downs. He'll put a new barrel on a rifle and look at how the difference in barrel length will affect velocity. Totally loves to geek out on stuff, but also into the retro builds and stuff like that, which I, I think are particularly interesting. So Bill's been a wealth of knowledge and uh, called him several times. You know, I'm texting him all the time. Hey, look, I finished, you know, the threading of the tenon and uh, look, I cut the chamber and this kind of stuff. And it was really fun to be able to, to share that with him and have him steer me in the right direction and keep me out of trouble, as it were. Because I really wanted to do this job and do it, you know, right and not mess up and burn a $500 barrel blank. So meeting Bill was great. Uh, I went through a complete dress rehearsal uh, on my two inch cut down section of the barrel. This is a little extra bit on, on the chamber side. And that was invaluable. So I, I threaded the tenon and cut it, the shoulder. I did the, the chambering. I was using a, a Manson reamer for that, a finish reamer. I went all the way in. That's one of the ways that you can do it. And this showed me, yes, yes, this is gonna work. And yes, you're ready. So then came the day I spent a long time. I won't even say how long dialing in the barrel on the chamber end. And then came the moment where I'm like, okay, well that's about as good as I'm gonna get it. So it's time to start cutting. And sure enough, I took my time. I took a lot of time, measure everything five times. I had everything written out on paper and calculated, you know, the bolt nose to tenon dimension and tolerance and all of the different factors that were going to be involved in diameters and lengths and it was a good thing to do. I took a lot of measurements off of the takeoff barrel and also used my Ruger Precision Rifle for some insights uh, when it came to threading the muzzle. In fact, this thread protector is off the Ruger Precision Rifle. still need to build that. So I, I took my time. I really enjoyed the experience. I was really kind of in the zone and and then I thought, you know, I'm going to be spinning this barrel on and off, testing stuff, and probably putting different chamberings on packages together for this rifle. So I don't want to, you know, I thought about Cerakoting it. It's a chromoly barrel, and, and so I thought, I just need to get this done. I'm going to do a cold blue job. So I did Birchwood KC Super Blue right on a lathe while it was spinning, and I applied it and used steel wool and all that, and I discovered how important prep work is. <laughs> Would have done a little bit more, but it, it turned out good. And... Uh, and so then, you know, there it was. I had inleted the stock for the larger barrel diameter, threaded the muzzle, chambered it, checked my headspace. Everything came together perfectly. Slightly tight chamber on the go gauge or just that tiny bit of resistance at the bottom of the bolt throw. Now it was time. It's time to fire it. And I fired it at 100 yards. I did the, the Steve Lawrence trick. For Steve from the 6.5 guys showed me how to bore, bore sight where you look straight down the tube at the target and then you check with the scope. I have videos on that. And uh, I was only about eight inches down and an inch over on my windage. So three shots and I was right in the center of the, of the orange dot. And then, and then I did a barrel break-in routine. I'll tell you though, that it was that first shot. It was just a thrill. It, was, it reminded me of the very first time that I reloaded ammunition. 
you know, the thrill of, hey, am I going to blow myself up? Well, hopefully not. And I didn't, <laughs> which is a good thing. And the rifle shot awesome. And during the break in, I was shooting three shots and then clean, three shots clean, three shots clean during the middle part of it. And one of those three shot groups, the second group was under a quarter of an inch. And when you see those 22 cal holes touching each other on the target, you know you're, you're into something good. So that's, that's what the experience was like. It, it's been the, kind of this major thing, obtaining machine shop equipment, getting all this tooling, and it's, it's worth it because it's, it's a great experience. I'm gonna be doing this on a periodic basis and it enables me to share the stories with, with you all. So I'm super happy. I, I can't wait to share kind of the rest of the story and other stories around rifles and handguns and shotguns and making them work better and making them work differently and doing different things. That's what it's all about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to GavinTube. Make sure you're getting notifications because we're going to walk through the detailed process and then the tools and then a whole bunch of other cool projects. So if you think you might want to be a gunsmith, if you think you're obsessive enough, if you like to do things slowly and patiently, pay careful attention, read some books, try some stuff. It might just be for you. Until next time, happy metalworking, happy shooting, and happy reloading.